Ladies and gents, welcome to your reaction. This is Geography Now, Finland, by the channel Geography Now. Ah, yes, Finland, the happiest country in the world, uh, one of the Scandinavian countries. Uh, they drink coffee a lot there, apparently. Uh, what else? Yeah, Angry Bird is from there, and obviously Mika Hekkinen. But there you go, that's all I know. So it's going to be fun. Uh, I love geography now, right? Uh, they go, go into very detail about small things here and there rather than just talking about the most famous thing and capitals and shit. So I like how they go into every detail here and there. So yeah, let's watch it. Ah, Finland. <laughs> Oh, uh, l let's talk about this place that I totally have no preconceived biases towards. It's time to learn geography now! Hey everybody, I'm your host Barbie. Welcome to the dark sheep of Northern Europe. All the other Nordic countries are like... La, 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 la. While Finland is like... <laughs> we'll get into the heavy metal thing in a bit, but first... Okay. Now just remember, Finland is Nordic, but don't call it Scandinavian. There's a huge difference. That title only belongs to Sweden, Denmark, and Norway. First of all, Finland is located- Finland's not Scandinavian? Huh. Because I'm pretty sure everybody see it like that, right? So it's Nordic, okay. In Northern Europe, lying on the Gulf of Finland and the Gulf of Bothnia, east of all that Scandinavian stuff. To the west, they border Sweden on the Torne River or the Tornionjoki until- it How north is that? Holy shit. Norway at the three country Cairnstone. And to the east, they border big ol' Russia with another tri-point border with Norway that looks like this. The country is divided into 19 regions or Makunta with the autonomous region that we'll talk about a little bit later and the capital of Helsinki located in the south on the Gulf of Finland which is also the second most northern capital in the world after Reykjavik, Iceland. The country also owns about 180,000 islands, the highest concentration of which found in the Baltic off the coast in the Oland Archipelago. Keep in mind, parts of Finland also lie within the Arctic Circle. That's how far up north they are. And the three Seriously. airports are Helsinki. It's in the Arctic Circle. Holy shit, how north that is. I don't know if I would survive there if I go there. That cold? Damn. Oulu and Rovaniemi. Now my favorite part, territorial anomalies! First of all, with Russia, there are too many split islands in Penne Enclaves, the islands of Aikaniemi and Sursari, Tarasinsari Islands and Lakes, the island in the Koitayoki River. Seriously, just play around with Google Earth and see how many you can find. Finally, we get to Sweden and things get interesting. Most of the borders with Sweden run along rivers that eventually flow into the Torne River, and then we get a strange golf course that is split between the two countries in the town of Tornio and Sweden. Not only that, but then you have the strange Mar Island right next to Oland in the Gulf of Bothnia, which has an inverted S-shaped border. It had to do with the lighthouse that was built belonging to Finland, but then Sweden was like, hey, it's too close to our side of the island. So they drew a border that was like this to give each side equal shares of the land. Oh, See this okay. archipelago cluster of islands right here? Yeah, it belongs to Finland, even though most of the people here speak Swedish. Oland is Finland's strange little administrative anomaly. Long story short, it used to belong to Sweden, but then the Russians took over it in addition to Finland. But then after the Russian Revolution, Finland became Came free and then the UN decided Olin should belong to Finland with autonomy but then the Soviets started attacking again and then Finland was like nope and then fought back relentlessly defending themselves and Olin and Sweden just kind of sat there and didn't really do much for Olin as they decided to stay neutral Finland defending Olin was kind of like the turning point now it's kind of like Olin Come back to me! Look, Sweden, we had some great times, but you kind of really didn't do much for me when things got crazy. I mean, Finland defended me, okay? And he treats me well, okay? His tax incentives are great. It's it's time to move on. It's not me. It's you. <laughs> Oland. Also, Finland kind of threatened that if Oland was ceded back to Sweden, they would demand the Tornio Valley. Now, before the whole Soviet thing, Finland operated the region... Yeah, I mean, it kind of makes sense since they are, you know, uh, connected by land. Uh, unlike Sweden, and they did defend it, so of course people are gonna be like, fuck it, why not stay with Finland? ...of Karelia, Sala, Kusamo, Petsamo, and some extra islands in the Gulf. After the wars with the Soviets, these regions were all ceded back to Russia, effectively cutting off their access to the Arctic Ocean. Very quickly, some notable sites and landmarks would have to be the old castles like Savonlina, Hamenlina, Olavinlina, and the most renowned Suomenlina. You can probably guess what Lina means by now. Rovaniemi is otherwise known as the home of Santa Claus, where you can go reindeer sledding. Inari and Ivalo is where you can get a real Sami traditional cultural experience. Of course, Helsinki is the epicenter of Finnish architecture and culture with landmarks such as the Tempeli Aukia church excavated into a rock, Mannerheim Street, the busiest road with all the shops and austere post-Soviet influenced blocky colonnaded buildings or the iconic Helsinki Cathedral. Now those are all great but Finland isn't really much of a tight metropolitan type of country. They love their space and have quite a bunch of it. Let's see what lies outside these cities shall we? <laughs> 
Now, if you want me to make this simple, some would argue that Finland is the best winter wonderland in the world. I mean, Canada's cool, but they have too many bears, and Iceland is too explodey, and Russia is too... Cold. Seriously, Phil, the land is generally flat except in the north by the border with Norway in which the highest mountain can be found, Mount Halti, although the peak is in Norway. However, in 2017, <laughs> Norway plans to give Finland the peak for their 100th anniversary of independence from the Soviets. Finland is just wonderfully... Damn, really? Okay. That is something to see, right? I mean, you are in your country just walking there. Oh, look at that. I'm going to climb that mountain. Oh, no, the peak is in another country. Crisp and refreshing, usually ranking in the top three countries in the world with the cleanest air quality. This is partially because Finland is almost 80% covered in forests, one of the yeah. highest concentrations per square kilometer in the world, only behind countries like Gabon and Suriname. This makes Finland the largest producer... Wait a minute, so Finland is not more, mostly ice, huh? I mean, if 80% of the greenery works like that of wood in the EU and one of the top in the world. Not only that, but Finland has about 188,000 lakes, most heavily concentrated in lake land. And in addition to lakes, about 10% of the country is comprised of all water bodies like rivers, ponds, and streams. When mixed with the land, this makes about one third of the country home to swamps and bogs, making it the highest wetland proportion country in Europe and disputably the world. Eh, maybe, but our floods are crazier. Fittingly, the name for swamp in Finnish is suo, and the word for Finland is suomi. I mean, technically they also have like nine other words for swamp like rame, neva, leto, luta, laiteko, apa, paisa, yanka, and korpi. And they love these swamps. One Finnish pastime is jumping in the mud, sometimes naked, and either playing Ooh, yeah, soccer that's... or wrestling. The landscape of Finland. Wait a minute, I remember that there was a Grand Tour episode, right? They also do the mud climbing type of thing, right? I mean, they go in this mud with cars and things, and when they get stuck, they use some kind of a winch or something to pull it out. That's some kind of a sport there, right? Finland is shaped that way because imagine what happens when you crush something under a heavy glacier for a really long time and then after the glacier melts, you're left with pockety erosion and mineral residue all over. Not only that, but Finland is experiencing a post-glacial rebound in which the land is steadily rising along the coast of the Gulf of Bothnia. Every year, Finland gains about 7 square kilometers and is technically rising out of the sea. The longest river is the Kemijoki that passes through Lapland and reaches the Gulf of Bothnia. And the largest lake, as well as the fourth largest in Europe, Lake Saima, is located in the southeast. Because Finland is so far north, they are known for being the land of the midnight sun, as during summer you can literally see the oh, sun yeah. for 24 hours a day in the northern parts by the Arctic Circle. And of course in the winter times there's hardly- Oh, that is fucking awesome, look at that. I mean it never sets, right? I know this, so it also happens there. Yeah, near Arctic Circle, it makes sense. Damn, look at that the sun for 24 hours a day in the northern parts by the arctic circle and of course in the winter times there's hardly any sunlight at all but if you're lucky you can witness an aurora borealis, especially in the northern parts oh and by the way the national animals are the whooper swan and the brown bear finnish agriculture i'm not gonna lie just uh, processing everything that he just said that would be so fucking cool to live there right i mean uh, you know if it's not too cold i mean you could get used to cold i guess but living there would be something I mean, there are lots of anomalies like that, like certain time of the year, sun never sets. That's something to watch, right? And then sun never rises, but you see auroras and everything. Damn. Also, uh, don't they have, you know, really strict uh, uh, driving schools and things like that, where they go through really ridiculous shit? Like, they even uh, teach you if the car, you know, start to, I guess, uh, go out of control, how to stabilize it, things like that. And then, then you have to, I guess, uh, they make sure that you also know how to drive on a wet road or something. I guess it's the most hardest, uh, you know, driving school in the world or something, right? I'm pretty sure I remember that from Top Gear or something. Of course, very standard. That's why there's so many Finnish drivers in the world, you know, famous drivers. For northern European countries, lots of rye wheat, turnips, potatoes, and of course, fishing is huge out here. However, due to the abundance of lakes and rivers, Finns prefer their own domestic freshwater fish like perch, zander, and miyuku as opposed to the sea fish. Speaking of which, coming to Finland, chances are you will eventually try reindeer meat in some shape or form, whether in stew or grilled. In Lapland, you might even find bear on the menu. You can try mami, a pudding made of rye, and of course, every Finn will make every visitor try this strong salty salmiaki. They love salmiaki so much that they made it into an ice cream and it's so good and I'm so mad they don't sell it in my hometown. Oh yeah, in the winter time they build ice hotels and there's like this cool waterfall in the Parati. You just gotta walk past that dam. They don't sell it in my hometown. Oh yeah, in the <laughs> Look at that shit, I love it man. Yeah, Nordic, it's like, you know, uh, how there are, you know, uh, in, in, I guess, Elder Scrolls Skyrim, right? It, it's apparently Skyrim is also Nordic, so this is, they take inspiration from there. There are dome type structures that are kind of, you know, ancient structures that are uh, kind of sinking in and things like that. This feels like that. I know there's a reach, but why not? 
<laughs> it's like, look at that, inside the ice. The time they built ice <laughs> look at that. Oh, this is awesome. And there's like this cool waterfall in the Paratisi Kuru area in the Uru Kekonen National Park. Okay, let's talk about Finnish people. Okay, if you go to Finland, you will most likely experience a rather intense yet intriguing social construct. First of all, the country has about 5.5 million people and is the most sparsely populated country in the EU. The country is about 90% ethnically Finnish, about 6% are Swedish, and the rest is made up of everything else under the sun like Russians, Estonians, Asians, and Africans. They use the Euro as currency, they use the type CEF outlets, and they drive on the right side of the road. Of course, the Finnish people speak the Finnish language, which is arguably one of the hardest languages on earth to learn. The conjugation is a mess, nouns and adjectives have inflection forms, whatever that means. Nonetheless, Finland has one of the best schooling systems in the world. In Finland, school hours are shorter, less homework is given, and there are virtually no mandated standardized tests apart from the exam you take in your final senior year of high school. Also, if you get your PhD, you have the option to get a sword and a... <laughs> it is best. <laughs> Damn. Okay. Are they, they're pretty high on education too, right? In education ranking, they're pretty high there too. So if that kind of a practice leads to really better education outcome, why are other countries not following it? Why subject to every other kids to have a million textbook in his back and just go to the school and read all that shit? A top hat along with your diploma. This is also why Finland is one of the most English friendly countries in Europe. Children are taught around ages 9 to 11 and most people of the younger generation can at least hold an impressively fluid conversation. Finland is actually a conscription country in which all men ages 18 and up are required to serve either in the military or civilian services anywhere from 165 days to a year depending on the type of service applied for. Oland Islands are exempt from the military conscription but are required to serve in some kind of institution like the Coast Guard or civil services. Finnish culture is actually pretty funny. The stereotype is that Finns are incredibly quiet and don't talk that much in most public transactions. Yeah. Just mind your business and no small talk. The cartoon Finnish Nightmares illustrates this concept pretty well. Check it out. Which is funny because Finland is huge on the boisterous, loud, and flashy heavy metal culture, having the highest concentration of heavy metal bands out of any other country in the world with nearly 650 per 1 million residents. Finns also invented... Well, that kind of makes sense if you are, you know, if your culture is really quiet in a way, right? I mean, uh, uh, every time I see a Finnish, uh, some guy like, you know, Mika Hakkinen or somebody, they're always quiet. But that does make sense. If that's how your culture is, lots of people seeing the world, how the world react, would basically, you know, like a spring thing, bounce back into whole another spectrum, which is heavy metal and things like that the wife carrying competition in which a man must carry either his wife or girlfriend or any girl that agrees to get tossed around in an obstacle course and the winner gets the women's weight in beer it's very strategic because if you want to win you might want to carry a lighter wife but if you want more beer whew, you better do your squats bro now if you must know one thing about Finnish culture you have to know about sauna the Finns invented the sauna most homes hotels and apartments have a sauna built into them they actually had a sauna competition at one point but then a Russian guy died and they had to kind of cancel it overall so Finns are kind of brought up in a mindset known as Sisu. It's kind of hard to explain the exact definition of it, but it kind of means something like guts or determination and never giving up, which really helped them along the fight with the Soviets. Sisu is to Finland what Jantelouin is to Denmark. There are so many other things. Oh yeah, the white death. He was Finnish, right? I don't know how I forgot that. Uh, that guy, basically, who was badass. He has no scope, just iron sights, and he killed so many, so many soldiers. Wish we could talk about, but we're running out of time. But we do have time for friend time! Historically, Finland was kind of always a little lonely. I mean, few, if any, trading routes ever went through this area. Even the Mongols were like, eh, we're good, nah, yeah, carry on. Nonetheless, over time, Finland did develop relations and to this day is one of the most diplomatically outreached countries in the world. I mean, the Finnish passport is the number one ranked and most sought after as it has the highest number of visa-free countries applied to it. First of all, Finland generally gets along with other Nordic countries. However, they have the biggest frenemy relationship with Sweden. They'll trade and share a beer or two, but when hockey season comes, the bloodbath begins. When it comes to Russia, Finland kind of has to be their friend because Russia has the longest border with them and business is important. Nonetheless, Russia is kind of seen as like the next door neighbor that you once got into an argument with, but then you kind of fix things up, but then you kind of really didn't get over it. And then you have to see them every other day in the morning as you go to work. Germans are always welcome in Finland and Hungarians are like the long lost distant cousins that they just discovered and are trying to build a relationship with. Their best friends though might be Estonia and Norway. Everybody loves Norway. It's like the Cameroon of Europe. Norway has never had any controversy with Finland 
Finland, and with the recent mountain gift proposal, relations are only strengthened. Estonia is like the nagging little sister. <laughs> I mean, better be <laughs> if a country literally gives gives you a fucking mountain. Yeah, relations better be good. Tries to imitate her bigger brother. I mean, they both even have the same national anthems. But in the end, they are family, and Finland always loves her. In conclusion, Finland really is a winter wonderland with quiet people that transform into metal monsters after a pint of long drink, topping their days off, baking themselves in human ovens for fun. And with that, we finish the finish episode. Ah, you waited for that for over 10 minutes. Stay tuned. The f mass, the country that must not be named is coming up next. On North Korea. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, geography of Finland. Yeah, fi Finland is some you know really interesting country since it's really north, right near Arctic Circle. Saying that you know sun never setting and you know aurora borealis at the six months of time, and uh, you know all the how terrain is and it's eighty percent woods. Didn't thought of that. I mean, yeah, that's a for for that you know small portion of the country. I mean, you know small compared to the other giant countries basically. You know, it has lots of different type of terrains. The woods area, there are lots of ice, obviously. The Arctic Circle, right? Yeah. All right, people. Uh, if you like my reaction, don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out the weeks and day. There's a link in the description. Check out the cast of Brace. Yeah, I'll see you next time.